Hi, in this video I want to introduce you to this set of videos on creating infographics using GIMP 2.8, which at the time of this recording is the most recent version of GIMP. One of the things you want to consider when creating your infographics is the size, because you want to make sure that, well number one, you have a call to action at the end of your infographic and if the size of your infographic is large enough then the place where it's going to be inserted like for example Pinterest or Facebook or Twitter that it's going to have to be scaled down in size so for the viewer on your Pinterest page or your Facebook page or your Twitter feed they'll have to click on that image to see it in full view to get all the information off of that infographic at which point they'll be directed to your landing page your blog your email capture form your offer whatever so that's one of the main things to consider is to make sure that your image is large enough so it will prompt them to click on the image to see it in full size. Next up, look at it as if it's just a flow chart of information. You gather your statistics on whatever topic is going to be on your infographic. You gather all the images you're going to be using on that infographic and then you want to have some type of a, a rough draft like you know the old pencil and paper thing. Sit down and sketch out your idea and that will help you know what images and what other elements to have set aside so whenever you start using GIMP to create your infographic you'll have everything right there. So let me show you where to get GIMP and some examples of some infographics that will hopefully help you start your creative juices going. So you want to head over to GIMP.org and this is where you can pick up your free image editing software. It's what they call open source and that's GIMP 2.8 and if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you'll see some additional information that might help you learn more about GIMP because this video series is not how to use GIMP it's on how to use GIMP to create your infographics. So if you want to learn more than what I'm going to be covering, hit up some of the tutorials. Check out their wiki page. A lot of information here to work with. For that matter, you can also just do a search on your favorite search engine for GIMP tutorials. Now, if you're going to go that route, be sure and look more for GIMP 2.8 tutorials because this has been majorly overhauled since earlier versions like 2.6 or 2.4. Now, to give you some additional ideas on infographics, I came up with these two pages just from doing a search on Google for infographics. And there was, I don't know how many bazillion different results that popped up, but these were just two that came up on the first page. Coolinfographics.com. Again, just use these as idea generation tools. Most of them that you're going to come across are going to be tower style infographics where they're about 600 some odd pixels in width and about two to three or four thousand pixels in height but you'll also see some that are more square or landscape type setups in either case use these two pages this one and visual.ly as just guides to go by again just to get those creative juices flowing so next up we're going to start on creating our infographic using GIMP 2.8